What's up, Sydney Army? Welcome to the video. So today we're gonna to talk about my one year arm transformation. You know, how I went through surgery, my recovery, and how I'm feeling today. But before this video begins, I first off wanna to apologize to you guys. Looking back now, and yes, I understand hindsight is always 2020. I definitely could have documented my progress and recovery a lot more for you guys. You know, I understand that those videos could have helped. I know a lot of you guys you know, I maybe got, have gotten injured before or maybe are recovering now or maybe you found my video randomly and are going through some type of injury and understand that those videos could have helped a lot of you guys but it's a decision that I made back when I got injured and that was that I didn't really want to document too much of it. Like, yes, I made little update videos here and there but you know, there's a lot more that I could have documented for you guys so I apologize for that. Like, it was my own selfishness and for me, like, I'm the type of person that if I'm going through stuff or if I'm injured or if anything's like wrong with me, um, I like to just handle it myself. I don't like people worrying about me. Like even my parents, I didn't even want to tell them, you know, I injured my arm and had to go through surgery. But in today's video, we're gonna recover, you know, my journey and the past year to recovery. So for those of you guys new to the channel, back in April, 2019, I ended up hurting my bicep. You know, I was helping a friend move, there was an accident. And to be honest, once it initially happened, I didn't think anything was wrong with my arm. I didn't think I injured it that badly. Like I didn't hear a pop or anything. I didn't hear a rupture. Um, I just thought that I might've strained my arm. Like it got, I remember it got like really tight. So I was constantly like stretching it. And I remember um, I was icing it that night, but I didn't think anything was wrong with it until I went to the doctor. And the first doctor didn't know what he was talking about, but he recommended me to another doctor who you know basically said I ruptured it and it needed surgery. If you guys are watching this video and you know you have the choice whether to get surgery or not, first off, I'm not a doctor, you should talk to your doctor. But secondly, there's what my doctor told me. He told me that you know unless you're 80 years old and you're not really gonna use your arms or biceps too much at all, then you know you should always opt for the surgery. He told me you're young, healthy, and that technology has advanced a lot in the past couple of years where the surgery is very easy, it has a high success rate, and that the recovery times are a lot shorter than they were, you know, in previous years. So basically, if you don't get the surgery, then you kind of lose your strength to supinate. Even turning doorknobs or grabbing things, you know, anything where you have to twist your arm, you know, you lose that strength. So fast forward to the day of the surgery, I remember I was just so nervous just because like I've never had any serious surgery before like yes I got stitches and stuff before but I've never had anything where they needed to like knock me out and put me to sleep and I just remember being so nervous you know I was like thinking all these like wild thoughts like what if there's infection what if something goes wrong you know but surgery went great like they knocked me out I remember I woke up I was like flying high and I remember telling the nurse how she has like the greatest job in the world because she has to work with patients that you know, get to wake up feeling this good and this happy. And <laughs> obviously like, yeah, the drugs did work. And they use this thing called a blocker on my shoulder. Basically the blocker, um, they shoot this shot into like your nerve. Um, they shot it in like my upper trap and basically it just numbs your whole arm. And it can last for anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. The blocker only lasted for 12 hours um, where I finally could start getting feeling at all. It literally feels like your arm's dead. Like you can't move it no matter what. And like within 12 hours, I could like start like twitching my fingers a little bit. So my arm was in a lot of pain. So I slept, you know, the rest of that day. And I think the next day too, I just stayed in bed and recovered. One of my greatest fears upon like going into this was I was scared of getting depressed and fat. You know, when people become depressed, they become inactive, you know, they eat and they just lay in bed all day. And that was my greatest fear. So by day three, I jumped on the treadmill only for 20, 30 minutes, just doing some light, um, low intensity cardio, just to, you know, get my heart rate up, just to stay active. Cause I knew for me staying active was gonna help keep my mind right. I understood that this injury was gonna hurt me more mentally than it would physically. And that's something that I wanted to keep right. You can only recover as fast as your body's gonna let you, you know? And what I could control, what was in my control was how my mental state was. And I understood that by staying active and doing something every single day, that was gonna help me mentally overcome this injury. So prior to getting the surgery, I remember doing a lot of research. I researched a lot of people. I remember, I know like Callum ruptured his bicep and there was like another power lifter guy that injured his bicep that documented the journey and the recovery and everything. So I kind of understood what to expect. And one thing that I did learn from watching and reading a lot of different articles was 
that the longer you have the cast on, the more your arm will atrophy. After my surgery, there were, it was said to have the cast on for two weeks. And honestly, by day nine, like the cast was super itchy. This is the first time I've ever had a cast. And I'm the type of person that will like scratch himself in his sleep if something's bothering me. By day nine, I called up my doctor. I told them, you know, hey, I need this cast off. I can't sleep. You know, I'm gonna rip it off. I was going like what crazy. So by day nine, I took the cast off. And as you can see in the picture, like, it is crazy the amount of atrophy that I had. I know some people thought I photoshopped the image because it looks so bad, but I literally did not have a tricep just after nine days. And I think a lot of it has to do with like trauma from the surgery as well. But I think a lot of it as well had to do with just not being able to move your arm for nine days. And people don't realize that just like doing these little motions, just lifting your arm, not even picking anything up, but just lifting your body weight of your arm you know, up and down, this is stimulating your bicep and this, you know, works your bicep. But when your arm's stuck in a cast, even just for nine days, like the atrophy is ridiculous. I mean, that's something that I was pre prepared for, but I wasn't, you know, it's two totally separate things. It's like watching someone go on a roller coaster versus going on the roller coaster yourself. It's two totally different things, you know, when you're going through it. And honestly, it was very demotivating, you know, I've never seen my arm this small since like, I don't know, year one or two of lifting, you know, maybe even before I started lifting. I didn't measure my arms at all throughout the entire progress, the entire journey. Um, reason being is because I didn't want to get it in my head. Like I told you guys, my number one goal throughout this whole journey was just to keep myself mentally strong. And I knew that if I kept measuring my arms every single week, you know, like, yes, like I might've seen growth, but on those weeks where I don't see gains and you know, like I just didn't want to rush the process. You know, I just wanted to let myself recover and not rush the process. That's, and that's something that the doctor really stressed upon me because he knew that I was dying to get back in the gym. I was dying to recover. I was dying to go over 9,000 again. And he kept telling me, you know, you will, you just gotta rest. You just gotta rest and recover and you'll just let it heal. I ended up getting the cast off. My arm was shriveled to like a nine-year-old's arm or whatever it may be. And then they gave me this sling. So. In other videos, I think even Callum had it in his video, he had this like robotic arm thing where they adjust it little by little. Basically, because they take the tendon and they kind of retie it back up to your bicep, that tendon is now shortened and that's why your arm is really tight. And it feels almost like, imagine getting a bunch of Velcro and just wrapping it around your arm. And every time you try to straighten it, it feels like the Vel Velcro is tearing. That's what it feels like um, when your arms stuff like that after surgery. I remember some days I, I thought like, would I ever be able to straighten my arm out ever again? Like, that's how crazy it was. So anyways, you know, I listened to my doctors and week by week my arm kept straightening out, straightening out little by little. I'd go to therapy and I remember like, it was such a big win just to do body weight curls. I remember lying down, one of the exercises she gave me was just body weight curls. And I laid down and I would just curl my body weight. And I remember how, amazing that felt just because my bicep was getting just any stimulation and just body weight curls would just 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 felt great you know just because for i don't know weeks and weeks prior to that i wasn't able to you know even extend my arm or work my arm in any type of way the only thing i was able to do was do lateral raises and i was king of lateral raises because i remember even when i had my cast on i was doing lateral raises with the cast because cast weighs like one or two pounds. Like I knew my arm was gonna shrink, but I was just trying to keep my shoulder intact, which, you know, ended up shrinking regardless. But, you know, it helped it stay active. And I also felt good just getting blood in my arm. It felt, I kind of felt like that helped the recovery just by bringing blood back into my arm again and just getting a little active. So I remember I bought one and two pound dumbbells. I actually, actually still have them for whatever reason. I got these for when I, I get the okay to start doing therapy with, with these bad boys. Yeah, wait. Little two pound weights. But I got those one and two pound dumbbells and I would do like hundreds of lateral raises every single day. And even once I got the cast off, I started going back to the gym. When I went back to the gym, I you know, decided that I'm just gonna train every other day. And I would only work my right side of my body. So I do lots of unilateral type work. Like yes, I read the studies about even if one side of your body is injured, you should train your, the other because it minimizes the atrophy to the opposite side. Um, did I notice that difference? To be honest, no. But it wasn't really what I was expecting anyways. I wasn't expecting you know, training my right side of my body to stop the atrophy on my left side. But the main reason why I decided to keep on training my right side, even though a lot of people were like, oh, you're just gonna make the imbalance worse and this and that and the other. Like, I didn't care because I just, 
needed to get into the gym. I've been training for you know over 15 years now, and I've been like I've been super consistent up until that point where I got the injury. That point where I got the injury was like the longest I've ever had to take like a real break from the gym. Prior to that, I think it was when I injured my lower back back when I was like 16 years old. So I kept training through it. And yes, like just going to the gym and getting like a pump, even though the pump felt super weird when it's only on like the right side of your body. Hey guys, look at the shoulder. This is a man's shoulder. <laughs> Oh, I can't show the other shoulder, the crab shoulder. Like just getting that little pump and just, you know, hitting the machines and just staying active helped me tremendously. And I think it helped me, you know, the most mentally, just being able to be in the gym again. And on my rest days, I remember I would do cardio every day. I do like about three to 400 calories on the treadmill and just walk around. And the last thing that I did that really helped was um, I picked up a new hobby. So prior to the injury, I was playing Pokemon Go like here and there, nothing real serious. And what I understood was now that I wasn't spending nearly as much time in the gym and that my life was going to be different until I fully recovered, I understood that I needed to find a new hobby. And I didn't really want to pick up like a video game just because it was honestly really hard to play video games when your arm can't like fully extend. So I played Pokemon Go with friends and that actually helped a lot because it took me outside of the house and you know i got fresh air and it just helped me a lot mentally just being outside the house and just staying semi-active just playing the game and something else i did was i booked a lot of trips i remember um i went to japan last year during the summer for the yokohama event yeah i just wanted to do anything just to get my mind off the injury because i knew i knew that it was only up to time you know with time it was gonna heal eventually and i was gonna recover and i remember my doctor said um, six weeks after surgery, you know, I could start using my left arm just a little bit So all I had stuck in my head was six weeks six weeks six weeks And I remember I would count down the weeks until I was able to start going back to the gym again So once I started working out again and using my left arm the gains came back very quickly As you guys saw in the pictures and the transformation pictures even like six months my arm grew tremendously You know muscle memory is real So don't worry about it for those guys that might be going through injuries and you know might be seeing some atrophy Don't worry about it muscle memory is real So next thing I want to talk about is diet now a lot of people are worried about losing muscle especially like during this quarantine time where everyone inactive and they can't you know go to a gym and stuff everyone's afraid of losing muscle so there's two things I recommend for that one uh, bring your diet back up to maintenance and that's if like you can't get any resistance type bands any type of weights or anything like that if you're planning on not being very active then yes you know obviously stay at maintenance and two is just get enough protein if you're going to continue to work out you know and use resistance bands and yes I understand the workouts would be suboptimal but also studies show that you only need a fraction of the volume to sustain the muscle that you did to gain the muscle, if that makes sense. So even though you're not able to do, you know, 15, 20 sets a week of bicep curls, even if you do like five to 10 sets a week of bicep curls, even with a resistance band just stimulating it, you'll still likely keep the muscle. Also for protein recommendations, I recommend 0.8 to one gram per pound of body weight. That also depends on how much body fat you do have as well. But you know, just to be safe, I would always err on the higher side. Um, for me, I always kept it at about a gram per pound of body weight, even throughout the entire recovery and even today as I'm dieting now. Basically, once I got back into the gym and started training again, like the gains came back very fast. One year later now, is my does my arm feel the same as it did pre-injury? No, not even close. It's still recovering. Even if you look, like my left arm is not as full as my right, my left bicep is not as full as my right bicep. And it's still gonna take more time to just develop and recover. And also my left arm is still not as strong as it used to be. Um, I'm left-handed, so my left arm and my left side has always been stronger than my right side. So if we were to take a weight that I could do for like a 10 rep max on my right side, I would probably only be able to do it about eight times with my left side. So it's still, you know, a little bit weaker than my right side. Like it's something I'm slowly working on, doing a lot more unilateral type exercises, working, working on the squeeze and contraction. And that's something else that still feels a little bit weird is like the contraction just isn't the same as it was pre-injury. I'm not sure if this is something that is gonna change through time or is just something that I need to get used to, but it just does not feel the same when I contract you know, my left bicep. But regardless, it's something I'm just gonna have to live with and just work through. 
And something that also helped is I also understood that, you know, this injury could have been much worse. There's a lot of people going through like major injuries that maybe, you know, prevent them from lifting for the rest of their life, you know, change the way they lift for the rest of their life. So I was very fortunate to have something, you know, semi-minor where I can still continue to lift weights. I still can still continue to make gains because this is a lifestyle that I love and that I've been doing for, you know, over 15 years now. It's always good to look on the bright side. So that's the end of the video. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. You will not regret it. Like the video. I just want to close out with one more thing. No matter what kind of injuries you guys may go through, whether it's now, or in the future you know understand that there are brighter days ahead keep your head up keep pushing through yes I know things may look dim and bleak you know you guys might see atrophy like like I did you might see your arm shrivel up to nothing I remember like I would grab my arm and like I would feel like you know because you're used to, to your arm being a certain size or you're used to your triceps being a certain size and I remember grabbing my arm after I took the cast off and thinking like bro whose arm is this like this is not my arm but understand that muscle memory is real you will recover you will get back and understand the harder we get knocked down the harder we come back we always come back stronger because that is the same way zenkai boost is real you know i am coming back stronger than ever yes i'm still not 100 percent and it sucks to say that a year later because honestly i thought i'd be a lot closer to 100 percent than i am today but it's all good. I understand that, you know, fitness is a journey. It's something that I plan to do for the rest of my life. So I'm just going to keep my head up and keep plugging through and keep on ascending. Thank you guys for watching the video. Love you guys. For online coaching, email me, gogoflect at gmail.com, program, sayinarmy.com. Much love, strength, and honor. Aloha.